the Move Transition plugin for OBS. Already the best plugin out there. Well, it's just been given a major update that unlocks the ultimate potential for a truly next level stream. Exceldro, the almighty plugin god, has given you the key to ultimate power. With this incredible update, you'll be able to harness the full power of face and body tracking to create incredible effects right inside of OBS without needing any other third party software. You know what, deal with it. In this video, I'll be providing a step-by-step -step guide on how to install and set up the plugin and explain the basics of how it works. I will also be doing a follow-up video to show some of the cool things you can make with this plugin. If this video has already piqued your interest, please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any other streaming and OBS tutorials. Trust me, I'm quick at delivering the latest information and today is a launch of this out of the world update. How quick is that? One last thing, since there are going to be so many things I talk about and reference in this video, I will include any links I mention in the description below. The most important part of getting this whole plugin to work is the Nvidia SDKs. This will mean you will need a compatible NVIDIA card too, uh, an RTX 2060 or higher. There is a GPU compatibility list on the SDK download link, again in the description. You will need to download the AR SDK that is relevant for your card. Even if you have this installed already, I would recommend getting it downloaded again to make sure you are all up to date, otherwise you might run into a couple of issues. Just hit the green download button to download it. I would honestly recommend installing all three of the available SDKs though. So you may as well get the audio effects and video effects SDKs whilst you're here. Just run through the installer and let it work its magic. Once you have installed all of these, you will need to reboot your computer. So please make sure you do that. Next up, we need to download the Move Transition plugin update. You can get this from the OBS forums or by using our StreamUp plug installer. You can learn more about that below. It's honestly the best way to keep all your OBS plugins up to date. A friendly reminder is that this plugin will only work for OBS 28 and above. The NVIDIA AR functionality will only work on Windows 2. So sorry Mac and Linux. Hit download in the top right and choose Windows or Windows installer. If you download the installer, just run it and choose the file path where your OBS-Studio folder is. If you downloaded the manual files, copy the data and plugins folders in that downloaded folder, navigate to your OBS-Studio folder and paste them in there. It will ask you to overwrite if you are updating, just press OK and tell it to have all the admin privileges, all that jazz and it will all be fine. So to get using the Nvidia AR Move filter, we need to head to a source with a face or body in. What better source than a webcam? Once we have one created, open the filter menu and under effect filters, press the plus sign and then select Nvidia AR Move. If you cannot see the Nvidia AR Move option and you definitely have a compatible GPU, Go back a step and make sure you installed that NVIDIA SDK is okay and that the Move Transition plugin was installed into the correct location. When adding the NVIDIA AR Move filter, we can give it a name, call it whatever you like, doesn't really matter. You will then have a huge menu pop up. Let me talk you through this. So we've got actions. This is how many different things you want to do with the tracker. This basically stops you from having to have a load of different NVIDIA AR move filters set up. So imagine each action is like you are adding a new filter. Exceldro did this so your computer doesn't use many resources as every instance of NVIDIA AR move filter will cause your GPU to pull data of the source it's attached to. This at the moment is limited to 20 right now. If you run out, you can always add another NVIDIA AR move filter, but beware as this could drastically affect performance. In the description box, this will allow you to write a brief description or name for what each action does. So you've got an easy reference to adjust things later. The action is a drop down. 
it will allow you to select four options. Move source, this allows you to control the position, scale, rotation, and crop of a source. Move volume, this allows you to control a source or filters properties, but bear in mind, it will only work with settings that are numbers. So for example, on a color source, it would work for the width and the height, but it will not work for the actual color. Filter enable, this allows you to enable and disable filters depending on a set criteria. And finally, source visibility. This, like filter enable, allows you to enable and disable sources depending on a set criteria. Now this is where it can start getting a little complicated. Depending which action you choose, the menus below will change. So I will break down each of them and give a small example of what each property does a little later on. The next setting that we can see is the feature option. This gives us a few different options that we can tap into from the NVIDIA AR SDK. There are some things here that will completely blow your mind. Please know that all of the movement tracking of sources all depends on what positional alignment the selected source has. This can be adjusted by pressing Ctrl E on the source or going to edit transform on the source. Changing the positional alignment will mean the source will be moved in relation to that anchor point. If it's top left, it will move the source around the top left point. If it's in the center, it will move the source around in the center and so on. The bounding box option. Imagine you have your entire head or body within a box. This won't track somewhere specific on your face or body, but it will track a point on that box. We have a few options to choose from depending on what source property we are controlling. For instance, if we are controlling the position value of a source which has two values, the X and the Y coordinate, we will see the following options that will allow us to tell the source to track the specified location of the box around our head or body. On the other hand, if we are only controlling one volume, such as the position X, we will have the following options. The landmark option. This is basically a pinpoint on your face that you want to track. As seen in the following image, you can see what all the landmarks we have available are. I left a link to this image in the description for your reference as well. Selecting landmark will open another property menu called landmark property. Again, as always, depending what options we selected earlier will give us different available properties. If I have the position property selected, I can select the landmark property position. This will basically adjust the position of the selected source depending on the position of the specified landmark. Next up, we've got the pose option. This is your location in the current frame. So how far away you are from the camera in 3D space. The pose properties will allow you to select the X, Y, Z, and W axis. The expression option, this is basically all the crazy things you can do with your face. There are 53 different options available to choose from. You can see them all in this documentation right here. When you are using this documentation as reference, you will need to add one to your selected expression as the documentation starts from zero and the OBS selection starts from one. So selecting something like 26, which is open jaw, will mean I need to select number 27 in OBS. Then I can control the selected action with opening my jaw. The gaze option. This is basically the information from, you know, the creepy eye tracking, scary weird thing NVIDIA broadcast has that I recently did a video on. We can utilize different eye tracking gaze properties that we want to track. We have the pitch and yaw of your eyes and head, where your head is on the X, Y, and Z axis, and where the center point between your eyes is on the X, Y, and Z axis. And finally, the direction. This is basically the angle between where you are currently looking and the angle to the camera. This again is tracked on the X, Y, and Z axis. And finally, the body feature. This tracks your entire body. There are 34 key points that are trackable on your body, as you can see from the drop down list. And 
the following documentation. Again, depending what action and property you are controlling, the options here will vary. You'll have the option confidence. This is basically how confident your GPU is that that body part is visible. There is position, distance, and rotation, which do what they say on the tin. There is an option for difference. This will allow you to compare two different key points to get a value to control your action. Something important to note before we move on is that multiple actions can be used at once. They can also control the same source, value, or filter so you can start making a very complex and incredible looking OBS setup. And we get to the last few settings. At the bottom of the action menu, you will see some other options. Again, some of these might not be available for all properties and settings. You'll have the factor option. This will allow you to change the value received from the tracking. It will change the multiplier to increase or decrease the value. This is basically so you can change how much your action is affected by the feature you are tracking. And yes, this can be a negative number percentage too. Next up, we've got difference. This will allow you to increase or decrease the value received from the tracked feature. And this again can be a negative number. You've also got get value. This is really handy. This will get you the current value for the feature you are currently tracking. This is perfect if you need to work out calculations for getting the tracking perfect and using the factor and different settings to get it right. This can be clicked over and over again, even if it currently has a value in the box. Next up, we've got easing. This basically does what it says on the tin. To get your controlled action a lot smoother, you can adjust this as you like, so you can get the desired effect you're looking for. And last, but by no means least, we've got threshold. This setting will appear when you use source enable and filter visibility. This will set the amount the feature tracked needs to meet to enable or disable a source or filter. I think we can all agree this update is huge. Acceldro has done an incredible job, so don't forget to give him some support. I'll leave his link down below too. I'll definitely be making some videos on the cool effects you can make with this plugin, so get yourself subscribed so you don't miss anything. In the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to swing by my stream at twitch.tv forward slash Andy Lippy. Actually, did you know I just made my own OBS plugin? It's pretty cool and super useful. Check out what it can do to improve your stream in this video right here. See you over there. Put your rug over the stone.